What's up, everyone? How are we doing today? It's fantastic to see all you design cutters in the comments, and I'm thrilled to be joined by my very talented friend, Austin, from Smash Workshop. What's up, Austin? Hey, everyone. It's nice good to, to be see here. Today. Thank you all for joining us. Well, welcome, Austin, to our first ever community hangout that's teaching animation. This is this is new for us, and I'm really excited because it's an area that I am definitely not an expert in. If anything, I'm very naive to it. But I know our mutual friend, Mike Fugoso, put us in touch originally, and I just started checking out your products. I'd heard some amazing things about them, and I was like, hmm, this seems to make animation easy for people like me that just don't have a clue. So I know today you're going to be doing a demo, right? And I guess this is kind of animation for non-animators. Mike? Might be a way to think about it. Yeah. So my goal today is to kind of help uh, designers and artists out there who might have some sort of mental block or be afraid of animation, which is very common to basically help you guys with that mental block. Uh, so you can bring your design, your artwork to life. And, you know, for me, I was a designer way before I became an animator. And I always wished I could like bring my work to life with animation in some way, but just didn't have the skills and little did I know it'd take, you know, multiple years just to get good at decent at animation. Uh, and little did I know that it would take hours just for like uh, the simplest animation projects. So that's kind of where these tools come in is it's to help bridge the gap for designers and artists to be able to bring their work to life without, you know, the undertaking of learning After Effects um, if you're not ready for that yet or if you just want to add a little bit of life to your work um, yeah. or a lot. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the gap we're trying to fill here. And I think that's fantastic. As I say, that definitely caters to people like me. And when our video and audio guy, Marco, who's super talented, used to play around in After Effects, I'd be so impressed, but I think that's so intimidating. I could never do that. You know, I was super grateful to have him. So this really does seem more accessible. And before we jump in, I would say for everyone watching from home and, and we can see we've got people all over the world. We've got people in the US, Australia, the UK, Germany. It's so great to see everyone today. Um, you know, really pay attention because animation and video is so hot right now. When you look at the statistics, everyone's always looking, how do I get more eyeballs, more attention on my work, on social media, in my portfolio? And animation is a really cool hack because most people still aren't doing it. They haven't bothered to learn it or they're too scared of it or whatever, but it over-indexes massively. So when you see people, illustrators and letterers who add an animation element to their work, it really, really helps them stand out. It helps them get more engagement and more growth on social media. Is that something that you've noticed as well, Austin? Oh, totally. It's, I mean, video is obviously the way of the future. I think everyone's figuring that out at this point. And that's really what uh, all the different social media platforms and stuff cater to with the algorithm. Um, mm -hmm. Plus just, you know, having a phenomenal illustration is really cool. But if you add a little bit of life to it, it just adds a whole new dynamic to that piece. Mm -hmm. um, and I think of animation almost as a whole new design element to work with. So uh, when you think of dealing with hierarchy. If you're creating a composition, you have scale, color, all the different things that control how important each object is in a piece as you arrange a composition. So if you have something animated, uh, that's going to draw your eye more than, you know, a big object or how brightly colored something is um, yep. just because it's moving. So I think there's really some interesting applications. I'm excited to see like what artists can do with these tools. Um, but yeah, should be fun. Yeah, definitely. And I've seen, you know, increasing amounts of great animation with illustration, with lettering. But equally, do you know uh, Made by James? Super yeah. talented, great guy in the UK. Yeah. Um, he animates his brand work and his logos. And so, um, you know, clients can use their logo mark at the start of their company videos and that kind of thing. So, you know, really, it doesn't matter what type of design or art or illustration or lettering you're doing animation can breathe new life into it. So that's why I'm personally so excited for today. I'm going to stop rambling on. And Austin, do you want to jump in and share your screen and teach us some animation magic? Let's do it. I'll go ahead and do a screen share. Perfect. Turn this on. Let me know if you guys can see it clearly. We can. Very uh, relaxing looking sunset background you've got going on there. <laughs> cool. Go ahead and minimize this. 
Yeah, and if uh, anything gets blurry or if you have trouble seeing things at any point, just let me know. It's super sharp from where I am, and yeah, everyone watching live says it's looking good so far. Cool. Yeah, I upgraded my internet just for this presentation. So. Oh, you did? <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, cool. So yeah, first I'll give you guys just kind of a glimpse at the kind of projects you can create with these tools we'll be going over today. Um, and then I'll kind of give you a walkthrough of what inspired the tools. Uh, and then we'll do a full like hands-on demonstration from start to finish of how to create uh, an animation in Premiere um, kind of based on the perspective of someone who hasn't used Premiere before. Um, I'll do my best to kind of take it slow and explain every little step. So in case you guys want to take notes, you can. Um, so yeah, without further ado, here's some projects that are created in Animation Builder. That was so cool. So this is a piece that uh, was illustrated by Michael Fagoso. Um, as Tom mentioned, uh, Michael is someone I've worked with a ton in the past. We're actually, you know, best friends, and we met in college. And we've been working together for quite a few years now. Um, so him and I team up on a lot of these different projects. I love working with Michael. Uh, he's, he's got a great style as well for animation. I think he really does such a unique style, and it really is very good for animation. Um, so this for is another for any old school design cutters watching, we had Mike on one of these hangouts like a year or, or more ago, and he was great. Yeah, Michael's awesome. At, uh, yeah, he's great at being in front of a camera too. Definitely one of his talents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of these pieces I'm showing you right now are from past projects Michael and I have worked on that have turned into use cases for Animation Builder. So uh love that basically... loving the london vibes did you do that specially for us <laughs> so we illustrated this in the past but yeah i made sure to feature this one uh <laughs> we've done like i think like eight of these um Very but cool. i figured this was this was fitting for today's event um so yeah uh what animation builder is really really useful for is almost no matter what you do in the program it makes it a perfect loop so if you set your duration to two seconds to five seconds to 10 seconds, no matter what you set your duration to, it'll automatically loop uh, all the different elements and they'll all move seamlessly. Um, so if you're creating social media content or want just like a perfect looping GIF, uh, it does all that work for you. So you don't have to do any extra work to make things loop. So this piece here, this is the, the demonstration we'll be doing today. Um, this is a paper rocket that uh, Michael originally illustrated and then I took the rocket and then basically cut it out and with paper. Um, I'll just give you guys a quick behind the scenes glimpse. So I took his uh, paper style illustration then we thought it'd be really cool to make it out of real paper. Um, so I very tediously cut out with styrofoam uh, and built the scene. I have a paper cutter um, as well as exacto knives where I was able to cut it out. Um, that must yeah, have taken a while. It was so tedious. It was a super <laughs> tedious project, but so rewarding at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, Very so cool. basically, uh, yeah, that's the piece we'll be animating today. And then just to give you guys an idea of a uh, cool use case of what these types of animations can be used for is what you learned today. All you have to do is import it into an augmented reality app. Um, which takes you know a couple minutes where you can just import it. There's apps called like iJack uh, and quite a few free ones out there where all you have to do is upload your artwork and then it'll recognize your illustration. So if you just point the iPad at the artwork, it'll automatically animate it for you. So here's just a little <clears throat> glimpse of what that could look like. And this still blows my mind. I've seen people post this and I always thought, how, how is that possible? And as you say, if you just get the app, it's actually surprisingly simple once you overcome that initial hurdle. Yeah, it's really not that hard to do. And <clears throat> that's what's cool is once you know how to just export the right type of video. Um, yeah, it does all the work for you. Amazing. So um, what I'd like everyone to do just while Austin loads up this uh, animation project Put in the comments, what kind of creative work are you primarily doing right now? 
Are you an illustrator? Are you a letterer? Are you doing brand design? Let us know in the comments because I guarantee whatever it is, there will be a benefit and a way you can start animating it. Leno says, I wish I knew how to animate. Well, you're about to find out, Leno. So don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, See if I can help. Yeah, Jackie says letterer. Yeah, Jackie does great lettering. Oh, Annie says music video. Perfect for music video. Brand Definitely. strategy, Maisha says. Um, as I shared, our friend James illustrates these beautiful logos. Branding, Drew, same for you. Um, Mary says illustrations. You can see here, this is so great for illustrations and not just your work guys, but if you have clients, imagine giving them some of this stuff, not just animations, but this augmented reality for their social media. Um, I think it's really, really powerful. So yeah, we've got a whole mix here. We've got illustrators, we've got brand designers, graphic design, very cool. I think today's lesson is really going to help everyone. So Austin, without further ado, do you want to jump into the animation project? Yeah, let's do it. Um, and before that, I'll just show you guys real quick the project that uh, initially inspired this. And that'll give you guys a bit of an idea um, of what uh, types of animations the tools capable of. So this is a project that Michael and I teamed up on uh, a few years ago for the San Diego airport. Um, they gave us full creative freedom. So this was like a very exciting, fun project for us. Uh, little did I know it'd take, you know, well over a hundred hours to create, be super tedious, <laughs> all animated in after effects. Um, you know, did we necessarily get paid for every hour we put into this project? Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> but it was worth it. So we made something cool at the end of the day. Um, so through this project, it really bothered me where I felt like so much of what I was doing, there should be an easier way to do it. Um, but at the time there wasn't, and it just took tediously keyframing layers, you know, so much time just animating one layer at a time. You have to write code to make things loop perfectly. Um, so anyway, here's the piece that inspired a lot of this tool. Awesome. And I don't know if you guys can hear it. Probably not. Um, no, but so it guess... looks it, it looks great, though, man. Cool. So we'll just play a silent yeah, video yeah. today. Yeah, let's go ahead. It looks amazing. I I love the for this. You basically you had a pain point, and that's why you've developed the tools you've developed. Oh, this is amazing. So it's safe to say everyone that Austin knows a thing or two about animation looking at this. This is very cool. <laughs> so just uh, leave a quick comment in the comment section guys if you wish that you could create animation work like this just say me i want to see how many me's we get because there's one right here i wish i could do this myself yeah that's super impressive austin and i don't know if you heard me because you you had the music on your end but i, I was yeah, just I'm saying double foot oh i love the fact that you did this laborious project and you basically thought there's got to be an easier way I think that's such a great story of how he came up with the tools that you guys have created now. So, um, yeah, should we jump in now and, and show the rocket demonstration? Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. We just got a whole bunch of me's. Everyone's like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'll see where I can help you guys out. All right. So here's, um, yeah, basically, uh, you can animate almost any type, any kind of file type from JPEG, PNG, uh, .ai, Illustrator files, EPS, um, even GIF and MOV with our tools. So the first step is to save out all your different layers, assuming most of you guys are designers or artists. I assume you guys know how to save out your layers, so I won't go th through that full process. Um, but in this case, I have all these PNGs laid out where basically layer by layer, I have each different piece that I'll be bringing in for this animation. So you can see each star, I have the rocket body, the thrusters, 
and then the background. Yep. So yeah, some stars, the flames as well. That booster, like you say. So it's not it's yeah. not a ton, it's not a ton of elements. You know, it's pretty manageable. Yeah, and that's the key is, um, you know, you really don't have to animate a ton of different elements for something to be visually impressive. It's all about just having strong concept. Mm -hmm. um, so if you just have one or two objects or even one object moving, uh, a lot of times is enough to have a pretty cool animated piece. Um, so what I'll do is I'll load up our template builder. And what I can do is I'll just drag in all those different layers. And first I'll just bring in the template. So, uh, animation builder comes with all different types of templates from, uh, a shape builder tool, a text builder tool, arrow builder. Uh, but the one we'll be focusing on today, since we're, you know, most of you guys are designers and artists is the custom image. So you can import your own artwork. Um, and then we'll do the, I'll just select high definition. Um, there's HD 4k and then vertical of both of those. But today we'll just do HD. Actually, this is a vertical orientation, so we'll do vertical. Cool. So these files are with the animation builder. Product. Yeah. So these are all essentially templates uh, that you can customize. Mm -hmm. They come with animation builder. So what I'll do is I just drag it into here, and then I'll drag in all my artwork. Great. And that browser page that's found within the instructions, right? Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Um, so if anyone's wondering about these tools, they are linked up in the shiny green button below this live stream. So if you want to bookmark that or open it for later, this first tool is animation builder, which is the kind of foundation of what we're going to be using. Yeah. So what I can do is once I have this template loaded, you can see all these placeholder images. There's 10 total. And what I can do is bring in all my layers. So I'll just drag them in kind of one at a time. And this is essentially preloading my template. So all I'll have to do is just drag this into Premiere and then everything will be ready for me. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I think I got all seven. There it is. I click generate. I'll call this paper rocket. And it just downloaded it like that. Yeah. Almost instantaneous. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll launch Premiere Pro. Uh, by default, I'll need to open up the central graphics panel. And to do that, all I need to do is go to Window and then click on Essential Graphics. I'll give that a second to load. Cool. And, and if you have any general questions, uh, do put them in the Ask a Question field, and we can go through them all at the end. But at the same time, do use the comment section if we're going a little bit fast. Or if you suddenly feel a bit confused, it's like, whoa, do you mind re-explaining that bit? Because we know everyone here, including myself, is new to animation. And Austin's obviously super experienced at this. We're going to go nice and slow today. Yeah, so I'm assuming most of you guys either haven't opened up Premiere or have only dabbled with it a little bit. So um, yeah, I'll do my best to kind of explain things from ground zero, step by step, how to yeah, do this Appreciate stuff. it, man. Cool. So here's my template. Um, it's just saved in my downloads folder. So I'll just drag and drop that into my essential graphics panel. And then I'll click yes. Perfect. And do remember, everyone, we are recording this session. So you can always go back and watch the replay and pause and slow it down and that kind of thing. Cool. So now I'll create a new sequence. So to create a new sequence, uh, easiest way to do it is just to go file new sequence. And none of these settings we have to worry about right now because it'll automatically be set by our template. So I'll just name our file Paper Rocket Animation. And then I'll drag this into our timeline. And then to make it match our template, all I have to do is click Change Sequence Settings and it'll set everything for you. 
give it a second to load. I feel like I'm at school. I'm paying attention very intently right now. <laughs> OK, so a couple of things you can do to get your timeline ready to animate. And so that way, everything's really seamless as you work um, is first I'll zoom in here so I can see it. Uh, and then I can enable looping in this timeline. And to do that, there's a little custom icon I can add where I just click this plus icon. And then you see this little loop playback icon. Mm -hmm. I can drag that into my toolbar, click OK. And then I'll just click it to turn it on. And then today for this rocket animation, we want to do a five second loop. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll select my layer. You'll see here's my menu. This gives me all my different settings. Uh, I'll set it to five seconds for duration. That's this first option up here. And then to make my timeline match, so that way it loops automatically, um, I'll go ahead and set an out point right at five seconds. And to do that, I'll just drag my scrubber till this says five colon zero zero. And then I'll click the little mark out point right there. Perfect. And I don't have to do this, but I'll just clip it so it looks nice and clean. Perfect. Where was that mark out point? Um, it's right here if you see my cursor. Yeah. Right below the preview. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. And then I'll just drag this down because we won't be dealing with audio, so we have plenty of room for layers. Cool. And then you'll see if I go ahead and press play, this timeline will loop automatically. Perfect. Sweet. So our first layer is uh, pretty much ready to go. And once we have our first layer set with all our settings, then all we have to do is just duplicate that up, and that will carry over the settings for the rest of our layers. Perfect. And, I, I know we're going to um, cover most of the questions at the end, but a couple of people are asking what versions of Premiere this is compatible with. Yeah, so Animation Builder is compatible with 2019 plus. Mm -hmm. So anything newer than 2019. Cool. Yeah. And I, I know not everyone loves to, but I do like to keep my software up to date just because so many great new features and functionality is released. Yeah, and we do our best to make our tools compatible with as many old versions as we can. A lot of our tools are compatible with as old as 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, but for Animation Builder to have all these cool features, we made it, um, yeah, 2019 plus, which just makes it so you can do even more cool stuff. Yeah. Awesome. OK, so I'll rename my layer. It's good to be nice and organized. I'll just name this background. Now I'll turn my interface off just because I don't need it at the moment. And then I'll duplicate this layer up. And under my object settings, you'll see I can select the next image in my image stack. So I'll just choose that yellow fire. I'll just call that fire one. And then I'll option drag to copy up another one. And then I'll select the next layer. And I'll name that Fire 2, option drag it up again. Can I confess something, Austin? Yeah. I've never opened Adobe Premiere before. Really? So you you probably feel like you're going at a snail's pace right now. But for me, this is perfect. Like, I, I need it as <laughs> slow. So <laughs> I, I hope cool. for, every, for everyone watching, let us know in the comments if uh, you're following along OK so far and if this pace is good. Cool. And yeah, I'm trying not to use shortcuts. I usually use shortcuts. So if you guys see me do something and you're not sure how I did it, just let me know and then I can explain what I just did. Appreciate it. Okay, so I'll name this layer Rocket. And I'll option drag this layer. Select image number five. Let's see. So ironically, I have my camera right in the middle of my screen, so I can't actually see what layer that added is that a star i'm assuming uh yeah, guys... yeah i think that was a star yeah cool you guys could probably see it better than that gun okay there's star number two And remember, everyone, the majority of us are stuck at home right now. Um, it's one of the reasons we love doing these hangouts and our live events, because for us, it's just great, 
you know, time to come together and, and have that creative outlet. So if you've been thinking about using this time to learn a new skill, I think this would be a, a really, really interesting one to get into. Yeah, it's really just fun to play with too. It's like the best way to learn this stuff is just, just to start experimenting. Um, the next thing you know, you'll come up with something cool and then you're hooked on it. I, I guess, is it kind of like Photoshop as well, which I'm very, you know, much more experienced in, where you can learn three to five of the basic tools and once you've got those down then really your imagination is the limit so once you've kind of mastered the basics you can just you know recycle them for all kinds of different outcomes yeah definitely so photoshop is built to be intuitive so that way someone who just dives in to try and figure it out you can actually learn how to do quite a bit without any training mm -hmm. um premiere is definitely the same way where you can dive in and then figure out pretty quickly how to do all the basics, you know, drag in footage, chop up the footage. Um, yeah, it's designed to be intuitive so that way you can learn it yourself while a program like Illustrator uh, is an intuitive program, but just to do the most basic things in Illustrator, it definitely helps to watch some training. Um, Illustri yeah, Illustrator scares me. <laughs> I'm way yeah, more comfortable it, in Photoshop. Yeah, Illustrator can be so awkward until you have like training in the program, then it's like, wow, this works amazing, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot different than Photoshop in that way. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, I'll start by animating our rocket. And just so you guys can see it, I'll isolate it. And I'll turn on my interface. And then I'll just give you guys a brief walkthrough of uh, this interface and then the types of things you can do. Um, so at the top, this is where I can control my interface. I can control the duration. Um, it's set up in steps, so that way uh, you can kind of follow step by step and then figure out what to do for animation. And it animates in layers, so you have primary in and out animations, which is how the object moves in and out of frame. And then you have looping animations. Um, so uh, I'll start with my object settings, which is where I can select the image, which is what I just did as I selected each layer. Um, to set the correct image for each one. Uh, I have standard transformations, just like you'd expect, where I can position it, set it exactly where I want it. Um, I can flip it. Uh, so those are my object settings. Those are all my basic transformation settings. Um, and then object placement, that's just for positioning. And then for, uh, I can set a custom center point per layer. So what that means is, for example, for this rocket, I'd want the center of gravity you to be toward the bottom, toward the thruster. Um, if you had something like a Ferris wheel, you would have the center point right in the middle of the Ferris wheel, so that way it'd rotate from the center. Mm -hmm. um, and wherever you set the center point is where, where the object will either scale from or rotate from. Um, mm -hmm. So it comes in really handy for a variety of different animations. Uh, and then we have these in and out animations, and this is where I can control uh, position animations, scale animations, and rotation animations, how it animates in and how it animates out. Um, so I can have it, I'll go ahead and start demonstrating this for you guys. So if I just want to have this rocket fly into screen, I can set it to animate position, and I'll set it to ease. As easy as that, we have our rocket coming in. And then before the end of our duration, which is five seconds, it'll animate out. So I'll continue playing it. So I'll shoot out, and it comes back in. Even that looks cool. Yeah, that's the cool thing is it really doesn't take too long either to start creating some pretty cool animations once you just start playing with it. Um, but yeah, for sake of demonstration, I'll just give you guys a quick example. A few a few quick examples with this rocket of the types of animations you can do. So there's an overshoot. And, I, I've and, and is this Premiere settings or is this animation builder right now? Yeah, so this panel you see over here to the right, this is all animation builder. Okay. And this is within Premiere Pro, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all of these kind of easy settings, they're all part of the tool animation builder. They're not inherently in the software. Yeah, exactly. So um, you don't have, there's no plugins or extensions to install. All you have to do is just like what 
uh, you saw me do at the beginning of this is you just drag in the template. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you do that, then everything's ready for you. It, it basically uh, leverages Premiere's essential graphics panel, yep. which lets us create these templates, which uh, Adobe made it possible for us to add a ton of extra code to. Um, so it's actually not a plugin. It's more so like a template that we're using. Amazing. That makes sense. Cool. So yeah, there's overshoot. I can set it to bounce. And I have full control of all these different settings. Um, so I can control how much it bounces and the speed. Uh, I can do a continuous animation. It's basically just where it moves into frame and then out of frame continuously. And I can do all these same animations for scale. So I'll just do a quick example. So you see it scales in. I'll do overshoot. So you can mm -hmm. imagine for a logo animation or whatever type of animation you're creating, you could have all the different elements come in in different ways. And you'll notice it's scaling from that center point that we set. Wait. We're not even like, you know, halfway into the demo and we just had two people who I think are grabbing the tool right now, Animation Builder. So nice. <laughs> thank, thank cool. you, uh, Sarah and Marie. That's hope, awesome. Yeah, we hope that you love playing with that. Cool. Yeah, so I'll give you guys a quick example of how uh, the center point works. So uh, under object placement, I'll go to custom center point and then I'll just shift. I don't know if you guys can see the little crosshair. Yeah, we can. Yep. So right here, this is my default center point, which is in the center of the image. And then my custom center point, I can move to be anywhere that I want. So if I was to do that and then set this, set it to scale from that point, you'll see it actually scales from that position. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so now I'll go ahead and just animate this rocket. So just like we did before, I just want to do a simple ease. So I'll have it ease into place. And then obviously we want it to be a little more dynamic than that. It just feels a little stiff coming in perfectly straight. So what I can do is now we can add our looping animations um, and then I'll have the position loop and I want it to move kind of randomly. So I'll have it move up and then kind of float in place uh, and then it'll shoot out a screen. So I'll set animate position to random. I'll bring down, down the speed and the distance a bit. And we'll see how that looks. Perfect. Remember, guys, do pop um, any general questions into the ask a question box and we'll make sure we get through all of those at the end. Cool. So you can see how that just adds a little bit of movement to it. So it starts looking a little bit more natural already. And just to notify us to turn off position, you can see how even though that's a totally random generated animation, once it gets to the end of this duration, it will loop. So you never have to worry about uh, an animation looping perfectly or not once your duration is set. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we got our position animation. Now I'll go ahead and apply a rotation animation. And I'll do the same thing. I'll just set it to random. Uh, I obviously don't want it to move super dramatically. So I'll bring the amount way down. I'll bring the speed way down. And I just want it to be nice and subtle. We'll see how that looks. Cool. I think that's looking pretty good. And even for me as someone who is, um you know, pretty intimidated by Adobe Premiere. I like that you can work almost exclusively in this panel. And this panel is not a bunch of crazy tools that I don't understand. This is all pretty logical with how things are named. And, and it's kind of just playing around uh, with settings and then playing it again and seeing what happens. So yeah, really intuitive. Appreciate it. Yeah, this, this interface, believe it or not, has gone through at least 10 different renditions from being super unorganized to like having some cool features to like we've really we've done a lot of customer surveys and stuff to try and really narrow it down to be as simple as possible mm -hmm. um i love it um crowdcast six asked can we get a copy of the final 
uh, file in the end to view everything that you've added to it. Yeah. So, um, uh, what we'll be sharing, I'm not sure if it's been shared in the chat room, but we have a free, uh, basically a freebie you guys can download that has all the layers for the paper rocket. Perfect. Um, okay. Ho hopefully, um, the design cuts team are on hand and we can link that up at, at some point during the session, but yeah, great question. Cool. So yeah, what's really neat is once I have the space layer animated, which is my rocket, then animated my fire, I'll go ahead and delete these two layers and then I'll just duplicate my rocket layer and it'll copy over those animations. So I'll just change the image of this rocket to yeah, number three. Uh, cool. So that slider again, people is just um, selecting the image from yeah. the from the gallery. Yeah, exactly. So what I'll do is, you'll see now my fire and my rocket move together because I just duplicated that layer. Mm -hmm. But I want my fire to move as well. So what I can do is I'll select that fire layer and I'll just rename it real quick. And now I'll add a scale animation. So I'll set it to random. I'll set the scale speed to be pretty low. I'll set the scale amount to be pretty low. Then I'll just see kind of how that looks. Looks way too slow. <laughs> so I'll bring it way up. Yeah, it's a rocket after all. <laughs> well, slow motion cats looking a little bit better. I'll continue to bring it up. Cool, there we go. It's looking a bit better. Now it looks a little bit lower. There's a chance it might clip right there. It actually doesn't look too far off, but I think there's a slight edge. So yeah, what what, where, just... where it's got a gap between the rocket and the flame, do you mean? Yeah, so if I want to fix that little gap after the fact, I'll just go to my object placement, shift it up just a tad, that I won't have to worry about it. So you never want to finish a project, render it out, and then be like, shoot, there's a little gap. Yep. Um, <laughs> so that should take care of that. Cool, there we go. And now I'll copy this layer. Now I'll copy the fire layer because I already have all those animations applied. And then I'll name this fire two. And then I'll select the little inside thruster. And you'll notice by default, they'll move uh, perfectly in sync. And that's because it is the same randomization applied because I copied the previous layer. So if I want these two little thrusters to move separately, all I have to do is just select that layer. And then under looping animations, there's a loop randomization option and that's where I can actually randomize how it scales. So now if I play it, you'll see those two layers will move separately from each other. Are you kind of randomizing the randomness? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if that right. makes sense. Yeah. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. I'll increase how much it scales just a little bit. And just kind of play with it until you start getting a look that you like, and then I'll do the I'm, same thing. I'm not surprised that project you showed at the start took a hundred hours, Austin. Yeah, you can imagine it's like because that was so complex. Very, yeah, it was a very tedious <laughs> project <laughs> for sure. Thank you, Johan. Johan says this is very good. I agree, man. This is this is super clear, um, even for a newbie like me, and very very interesting and helpful. Cool. Glad you like it, Johan. Cool, here we go. So we got our fire layers animated. That looks awesome. It, man, Like I can see why you live in the animation world because this is so satisfying to see it come to life. Yeah, I get so excited doing this I bet. kind of stuff. And for me, it's like spending years doing it the manual way tediously. It's like being able to do it with our own tools and have it be this quick and easy as pretty rewarding. It's taken definitely a long <laughs> way to get to this point. Um, yeah, so now I'll go ahead and animate our stars. Uh, so this star is right behind 
my camera to have my camera eye level i actually have it mid screen so i'll animate a different star first kim says i use premiere all the time and this is going to be a time saver cool i, I can tell looking at this this is going to be a huge time saver kim yeah i'm stoked to hear people are saying things like that so this tool we really haven't revealed to very many people yet um we've you know announced it to our own audiences uh but this is really like the first public demonstration we've ever done um well we see, appreciate you jumping on it design cuts and i know when uh when our mutual friend michael introduced you and and what you're building to me the first stuff i started hearing was it was just selling like hotcakes you know it's been enormously popular for you guys and i'm excited to try and bring it to the dc community and spread the word because ever since i first kind of looked at, at your tools i was blown away appreciate it yeah it's been mind-blowing for us how much demand there's been for these tools but there's also been a huge limitation of trying to reach that audience for us so that's where you know design cuts is a huge help um since you guys are the design market you know tom you've done an amazing job of building an amazing design community thank you man cool so we got our star uh while we were talking i just added a random um scale animation to this star and i changed the center point just to match the middle of this of the star and then I'll go ahead and add a random rotation to it as well. And I'll just kind of play with that until it looks how I want. Pedro asks, can we modify the size of the, the sequence? By that, I guess he means the length of the animation, in, in which case the answer is definitely yes. Yeah, and if he's referring to resolution, I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so. By default, there's two different sizes for the interface, uh, which is, or actually there's multiple, depend on which template you import, but basically there's 16 by nine aspect ratio, and then there's square. Mm -hmm. um, either or works for pretty much any size artwork, so you can just decide which one you prefer. And then to change the actual artwork size um, to whatever your actual artboard is or your actual project, uh, if you wanna match it, you can go to sequence settings, First click in your timeline, then go to sequence settings up here, sequence, sequence settings, and then open up this menu. And this is where you can type in your resolution. Mm -hmm. So by default, that template will load in all these dimensions for you. But if you want to set a custom resolution, you can with the frame uh, width and height. Um, so say you don't want a 16 by nine aspect ratio, you can totally adjust that here. Amazing. And same with if you want to adjust frame rate, say you want to have like a stop motion look, you can do 15 frames per second, um, you know, basically set your frame rate to be whatever you want. Uh, and the added perk of doing less frames per second is everything will load and render faster. Awesome. That's just a little, little tip. Uh, Marie just said she just bought it. Thank you, Marie. We appreciate awesome. you. Thank you, Marie. Cool. So yeah, we got one star animated. Um, and for sake of time, just so I have time to demonstrate the other tools as well, I'll just kind of leave these guys as is, and then I'll give you guys a quick, I'll just play it through real quick. So you can see in a very short period of time, even with, um, you know, taking your time on a project like this, you can really create some pretty cool animations and um, yeah, and. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes that could very easily take, you know, hours um, using After Effects or other animation software. Yeah, for sure. And just be that much more manual. Totally. So, and of course that comes with like added value where in After Effects, you, you can do literally anything, but with being able to do anything comes with the huge learning curve. So, um, and I know that this tool can do a huge number of the basic animations that most people would need. Totally. And that was really the goal. It's like, what animations am I doing on an everyday basis and how can we simplify them? So we tried to not include everything, but we did include a lot. And what we found were the most common types of animations is what we included. And uh, just like 
uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, there's an effects panel in Premiere. So one thing I can do is I can add a drop shadow. And I'll go ahead and just add a drop shadow to my rocket layer. And then under my effects controls panel, I can control all those settings. So I'll just go to drop shadow and then I'll increase the distance. I'll increase the opacity. I'll blur it a little bit. And then I'll increase the distance a little more just because I like dramatic lighting. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Cool. So something like that. And then once you have that drop shadow done on one layer, you can just copy it to as many different layers as you want. So I can just apply that to these. And same with the stars. I can go ahead and apply that to all the stars. Cool. And there you go. This is the fully animated piece. This would take uh, a few minutes to render out. So what I'll do is I'll just skip to the rendered out version, which is basically the same. I was going to say, it always looks a bit jumpy until you render it and see the final output, right? Yeah, exactly. So while you're previewing it, um, since it's compositing it all, it all in real time, it does take uh, yeah, a few minutes to render. But um, once it's done, it'll be nice and smooth. It's like, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> that looks so cool. I love the, tw the twinkling stars. Yeah, so nice. this piece here that, too is... That's so great, Austin. I love it. <laughs> I appreciate it. And yeah, again, this is just a five-second loop. So you'll notice all the stars right at the end of five seconds will loop perfectly right into the next one. Um, the that's such a huge thing, through. right? Because if they glitched or the, had a little awkward jump, yeah, normally uh, it's such a challenging process to try and get everything to loop properly. So, um, yeah, it's one of the things uh, we put the most time into is making that feature work seamlessly. I love it. Um, just quickly, Helen asked, how do you render? So if we were in here, we don't have to go through the whole process, but where would you start? Yeah, so you can go to file, um, or sorry, sequence, uh, render into out, and that'll just render your timeline here. Yep. Uh, if you want to export, I'll give you guys all the export settings I'd recommend real quick. And mm -hmm. um, this has changed a ton over the years. You used to have to know a lot about export settings, but fortunately, it's gotten a lot simpler just in the past like two to five years. So um, fortunately, Instagram, Facebook, Dribbble, YouTube, almost everyone prefers the same uh, file type. So that file type is called H.264. Uh, and to save that out, I'll just go to File, Export, Media. And uh, it'll probably be the default for you as well. But for me, you'll see it's the default H.264 is the format. Mm -hmm. All your settings by default should come through with the template. So you won't have to worry about changing them. But if you do, you can see your resolution is right here. If you want to adjust your resolution, you can adjust your frame rate right here. Um, you always want to make sure your pixel aspect ratio is square pixels just because you don't want rectangular stretched pixels. Um, but aside from that, you can leave everything default. Uh, and you should be able to leave everything default aside from H.264. Um, this here is just basically increasing quality, but with that increases file size. Mm -hmm. And then right here, if I click this blue link, this is where I can choose where I want it to save to. So if I wanted to save this into my folder, and by the way, I do recommend staying as organized as you can. So like having your templates in a folder is helpful, your renders in a folder, your artwork in a folder. Um, that way, if you ever want to open up an animation project later, it's nice where, uh, yeah, you can just dive right into it and then you don't have to remember where you put everything. And I love that your tools do have instructional guides and stuff. So if people get stuck, you know, you can definitely get things going and read through the guide. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions or run into any challenges, you'll see as you get the tool, it does come with, um, yeah, a lot of instructions as well as tutorials. Um, in this video we're doing today, will probably become a tutorial as well. Um, but yeah, you can see it. all the 
demonstrations and use cases built in <laughs> <too>. baby yoda yay <laughs> yeah so we got a tutorial on baby yoda that's uh this awesome illustrations by roger king very phenomenal cool. designer um there's how to do the paper rocket as well this is so cool um okay i can see we've got a bunch of questions that have come in just before you stop cool. sharing your screen i'd like to encourage every single person who's watching live to show some love for this demo by Austin in the comments because that was super interesting, really, really helpful and just inspiring, to be honest, man. Like, I'm, I, I want to try this myself now. I want to stop shying away from illustration. But yeah, we, yeah. We, got, we got a ton of great feedback as you were teaching her. Awesome. Yeah, my goal is just to help people with the intimidation or kind of the mental block um, that comes with animation because like as myself being a designer way before I became an animator, I always wished I could do stuff like this. I just didn't realize the time investment, learning the software, as well as how much time it took per project was so mm -hmm. huge. Um, oh man, if you want to cool. feel good, look at the comments right now. <laughs> hey, so thank many you guys. Um, yeah, I loved that. And you know what I really love about today's live hangout? It's so different. Like so, so different, I think, from anything else that we've ever done. And it's just, it feels very fresh. It feels like something clearly a lot of people want to explore now. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what the design cutters out there are going to cook up after this demonstration. So really awesome stuff. Um, we got some questions, Austin, if, uh, if you're good for like 10 minutes. Yeah, totally. Cool. Um, so... I would love to know how to animate a logo or a simple flat illustration, please. Um, says, oh, that comment just disappeared, but whoever whoever asked that, I think it's a great question. Obviously, you had something with quite a bit of depth there with the paper stars. What if it is something a bit more clean and flat? Yeah, so um, we have a, so Animation Builder comes with a few different tools. Uh, I kept today's demonstration mostly focused on custom image because I figured that would that's what most of the audience would be interested in. But with our shape builder tool, you can do uh, line animations, which can come in really handy for logo animations. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a million different ways to do a logo animation, but using uh, the artwork, or sorry, the animation builder tool, you can import each piece of the logo and then decide how you want it to animate in or populate in. Um, in different ways or say you just need a quick logo reveal you can just import the logo and just have it bounce in in some way mm -hmm. um and as many pieces or as few pieces as you want it to awesome um andrew as well asked i'm interested to know if it's a better idea to use specialized software like after effects for animation or if it's more cost effective to learn animation tricks in an editor like premiere pro um and i think he left that comment before seeing the demonstration so what would you kind of advise for people who are looking to get into animation? Yeah, so our tools are designed to kind of help uh, designers and artists and just like the everyday filmmaker, or YouTuber, or any content creator uh, to kind of help you guys break the barrier to animation. And um, it's a very robust tool that doesn't take long to learn. So in a short period of time, you can start animating your work. But if you ever do want to take things to the next level, uh, it does help with learning the basics of animation where it's like, oh, if I can have things ease or bounce or overshoot, or if I can learn how to create this kind of loop in After Effects, um, you kind of already know what you're going for. And then, yeah, with After Effects, you can do anything. Um, that's one of my main specialties. I love After Effects, but with that yeah. has come a huge learning curve and a lot of you know thousands <laughs> yeah. of hours learning the software. <laughs> Yeah, if you've got a few years to spare After Effects, if you want to be like a full-on professional animator. But as you say, you've created these tools for designers. So it's exactly our audience where, you know, a lot of people who are watching live, they said they're either beginner animators or they're designers who aren't really familiar with animation. And I think this is such a good bridge to actually exploring that. Um, so another question from Sandra says, what is the name of the AR app that you demonstrated? Because I've been seeing these. They're very cool. Yeah, the so the one, reality. the one I've found is the easiest to use, especially for designers where you literally drag in your footage and then you can drag in a sound bite to go with the footage. It's called iJack, all one word, E-Y-E-J-A-C-K. Okay. Um, and there's... So if, if the team can 
find that and link it up in the chat. That would be amazing, please. Yeah, so if you guys use that tool based on what you learned uh, today, if you can export a H.264 file, you can just drag that straight in and then um, import your original artwork as the frame that it recognizes. And then, yeah, you have your first AR piece. Nice. Um, Alf says, was the template um, used limited to only 10 assets? So I know you had 10 yeah. images built in there. Yeah, so each template is limited to 10 assets, and that's just for loading time, just so it loads fast. But if you ever want to load uh, more layers than that, you just create another template and then bring in another template. Um, and that essentially gives you unlimited amounts of layers. Uh, one inherent limitation of Premiere is it's not amazing at dealing with tons of layers the same way After Effects is, just because of how it's built. But it has gotten a lot, a lot better over the years, mm -hmm. um, where it can hand handle a handful of layers now, which is cool. And that's what makes these tools possible. Perfect. So I think that's great for people, you know, if um, if they want something that's great to use out the box and super fast, you've got it. But if you want a little bit more for your needs, then um, that's definitely possible. Uh, Bob asks, is this only for straight line movement or can you follow a curve? Yeah, so um, the tool is meant to be leveraged for the keyframeless uh, animations, which is standard animation. You set point A, you set point B, point C, where you can control the trajectory of an object. Um, you can you can do that in Premiere as well, where that can actually be combined with our tools. And I'll just do. Uh, can you guys still see my screen? Or uh, we can't. You might need to reshare. Cool. I'll just do a really quick share just to answer that question for you guys. Cool. So yeah, you can combine our tools with standard keyframing. So over here, I could set the position of my rocket. To start right here, I'll scrub forward and then say I want it to move over here. And then I'll scrub forward a little more and then say I want it to move over to here. So you can see I can actually control that trajectory. Mm -hmm. I can control the exact movement and then it also has that wiggle and the different position animations applied to it. So it's it can be really useful to use a combination of Premiere's built-in animation keyframing tools, which can take a little bit of a learning curve to figure out how keyframing works. But if if you learn it, then um, yeah, that can be really useful to apply as well for animations. Love it. Bob says, thank you so much for answering the curve question. Cool. Super welcome, Bob. Um, so uh, Gecko asks, what kind of Mac are you using, Austin, in terms of horsepower wise, memory, etc.? Is it a so piece? I'm, <laughs> um, I'm using a laptop. It's a 2019 laptop. Uh, okay. We've done tests with even like 2013 MacBooks, and um, it works well. Of course, the more RAM you have, it does tend to work quite a bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've used it on uh, old PCs, old laptops, and it works fairly well on most of them. Um, or it works on all of them. It just works faster and faster, of course, the better specs you have. Um, but yeah. Perfect. And as you said earlier, you've had a ton of customers of these tools so far so I, I know personally you know how many that is it's a lot of people that have been grabbing them and they of course will have a variety of setups and um it seems to have been working great for people alf asks what are the different export options um he presumes that gif and mp4 etc are included that come with the builder yeah totally so um if you guys want i'll do one more quick screen share <laughs> yeah, sure. Export a GIF. Bob, <laughs> Bob says, Austin, the Yoda of animation. <laughs> cool. Animate you, you will. My screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst Yoda impersonation ever. <laughs> Pretty sure that okay, was so like, Oh, I liked it. Sounded accurate. <laughs> cool. So if I want to export a GIF, I can do the same thing where I go up to file and then export and then media. Mm -hmm. And this is a feature Premiere just added um, within the past couple of years. I actually just noticed it like this year um, is under format. I can actually select animated GIF uh, and direct out a Premiere with all these animations you create. You can actually save out a GIF. Um, and it just gives you some basic options where you can control the size and everything frame rate as before. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and then you can lower the quality. You can get all the way down to like quality 20 and the quality will uh, look pretty good. And yeah, basically you just do a few different exports, see what settings look the best. But if you want to compress it, like for an email, I recommend going down to about 20. Um, and that just depends if your artwork has gradients or other things that can handle the compression. Yep. Um, and then lowering the frame rate is also really useful for a GIF because the biggest issue with GIFs is uh, the file size for animations. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever you can do to shrink the file size that way it's, yeah. So you can share it on email or social media or whatever you want to do with it. I love it. Um, just a note for the team, cause I, I know they're watching and helping out right now. Next time we have Austin back, if you're happy to come back, Austin, we've had several requests for that. Yeah, totally. And this cool. is just like, yeah, today we just focused on this one tool too, and this is our first time showing it to anim or to illustrators and designers and artists. So yeah, we'd love to do more. Love it. Um, yeah, for, for the team watching right now, next time we send out any emails or stuff like that to do with Austin's tools and, and workshops, can we use an animated GIF in the email? That would be a cool idea. Um, final question I think that we got time for. Um, Eamon asks about updates in the future. Yeah, so um, deciding how much I should get into this. We have a huge update coming pretty soon that anyone who's purchased in the past does get free access to all future updates. Great. Um, that, that was kind of the question, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we have time, I can give a quick glimpse of what that next update will look like. I just have a, a video preview of it. Yeah, sure. If everyone's, cool. yeah, I think everyone's sticking with us. I mean, cool. no one's, no one's about to pop out the house or anything. So, <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'll just do one more quick example because we, I literally just got this yesterday. This is something we've spent a ton of time on. Um, so, you'll notice our uh, our template customizer. We had to open up in a browser. Uh, what this is is it brings everything into Premiere Pro. So here's the the template customizer tool all within Premiere. And this is something we literally finished yesterday. This will be a part of the Animation Builder 2.0 release. So oh, like in, in, so instead of it being on the website and having to download that, it happens natively. Yeah, and it also saves all your different presets and all your past uh, templates directly into the panel, which comes in really handy just so you don't have to open up the website or have an internet connection for it. Cool. What is the um, dot M O G R T? So the dot M O G R T, that's just the name of the template file. It stands for motion graphic template. Um, oh, okay. It's something cool. Adobe released in like 2017. Mm -hmm. It's basically just like a template file where you can, yeah, in our case, custom code something from a really simple template to, uh, you know, adding a ton of code to a very complex template if you want amazing and you said that update is going to be included uh, along with the other updates for free when people grab the tool yeah so the 2.0 update that'll hopefully be coming out soon we're doing beta testing rounds now and then um some surveys to close audiences and then we'll be releasing that publicly pretty soon here amazing um austin thank you again i i mean that was perfect perfect answers and you know so helpful for everyone's questions and just such an interesting demonstration so a huge thank you for coming on today and i know we've got a bunch of people at home watching live right now if you are on the fence or you're interested in trying animation click the shiny green button below this live stream uh, and the team can pop a link in the chat as well um, they are amazing and it's not just the animation builder there is also uh i believe it's called the handmade builder this is where you can add texture and so on yeah, hand painted. Um, hand painted. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another tool we can maybe save for another day, but that's where you can import your own artwork and then it'll automatically take uh, your vector artwork or raster artwork, whatever graphics you have, and make them look uh, hand painted. Um, and it'll dynamically animate it frame by frame for you. So it looks like a little stop motion painted animation. And then it also comes with some different elements and stuff you can add to your work. 
yeah i've seen it in action i've seen the videos and it's a very very cool tool as well so um we'd love to hopefully have you back in the future austin to demo that one um and let us know in the comments as well just before we wrap up this session uh, great, the team have just linked it in the chat as well. Um, just leave a quick comment saying if you have grabbed them or if you're thinking about grabbing them, if you're about to grab them, just because we want to um, say a personal thank you to everyone. We, can, we know several people. Alf says I'm getting both. Thank you, Alf. Um, yeah, Austin, are you good if we just, uh, for a couple, a couple of minutes, just give a little personal thank you um, to everyone? Yeah, totally. Cool. Um, can, you, can you see the chat okay? Yeah, let me pull it up. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate everyone who joined today. It was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm just excited to see what everyone creates too, because our core audience has always been filmmakers, YouTubers, uh, less so designers and artists. And that's why we created this very designer specialized version of the tool. Yeah. Um, so this is really ground zero. We've, we have everything like totally bug free and tested to our animation audience and our filmmaker audience. But this is our first time like really uh, bringing it to designers so i can't wait just to see what kind of cool stuff everyone makes with it well everyone knows designers are the best anyway so they're going to make some absolute incredible animations i've got no doubt yeah um, especially the design cuts design right. team i know there's so many phenomenal designers out there yeah there's some talented folk out there um i, I just want to um thank a few people by name because you're absolutely awesome everyone so um gecko we got jay gannon meister we got kathy we got bob we got susan kim uh misc me uh Eleni, drew jay ashley laura there's tons of you guys um merger agoniska regina says best de demo ever that's a that's a big compliment because we have some some very cool people on these um thank you yeah thank you uh thank you so much every single person and as always you know you get unlimited support um i know austin's also very proactive so um you know if we really get stuck or, or need some assistance we know we can reach out to him but we of course have our customer care team here so any design cuts uh resource that you do purchase you don't have to worry will you hear back won't you you, do, you get a dedicated person who's going to be super nice look after you um so do reach out anytime and also just reach out to us to share your work tag us up on social media drop us an email we love to see it we love to reshare it and we seriously can't wait to see what everyone makes perfect cool. austin Thank you again. You're the best. I can't wait to chat soon. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for having me on, Tom. And thank you to everyone who joined. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. And have an awesome evening or morning. It's morning here, but you know, it's <laughs> evening in UK. Yeah, yeah, we're going into evening. It's it's very rainy out the window. We've returned to normal British weather after a couple <laughs> of lovely weeks. But um, yeah, Shoot. Austin, we'd love to have you back. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Um, and we will see you for next week's Community Hangout on next Thursday. So have a great rest of your day. Have fun playing with the animations. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye.